A very good afternoon, No Ties family. My name is Rishi Patel. I'm the founder of Selling in Alignment, and I have the honor of doing the 10 minute talk today. What I'm going to do is set myself a little timer because I love, love, love to talk, and it would be very easy to get carried away. I'm also really conscious that this is a one hour presentation which I've whittled down to 10 minutes. So let's see how that plays out. So today I want to talk to you about repricing and packaging your services. I want to talk to you about why this conversation is even important. So let's go over to a little screen share that I have set up here. And let me go ahead and share my screen. There we go. So we should all be able to see the screen. This is an extremely interactive presentation. So please find the Zoom chat box and just punch a Y in if you can see the screen OK and hear me OK as well, then I'll know we're good to go. Brilliant. Ah, superb. Thank you all so much. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. OK, great. So how to set your prices and feel great about it is the topic of this 10 minutes. So we're going to cover this in the next uh, 10 minutes. This is what we're going to cover. I want you to take away these three key points from this talk. One, why is this topic even important? Two, I want to look at core pricing psychology. And three, what do I need to charge what the business is really worth? OK, so these are your three takeaways from this talk. Why is this topic important? Core pricing psychology and what do you need in place to really charge what the business is worth? Good. So before we kick off, as I said, it's an interactive presentation. So please open up the Zoom chat box and type in as many different departments as possible that you can think of within a business. So as many different departments as possible. Okay, great. So we've got purchasing. Great. Okay, keep going. We've got HR, we've got finance, marketing, accounting, sales, HR, HR, marketing, IT, purchasing, sales, supply chain. Thank you, Denise, IT. Jenny says legal. Absolutely. Simon says ops. Very important. Compliance. Thank you, Alison. Absolutely. Sales, admin says Shirley, absolutely very important. All of these departments are important inside of running a business. Now, as a coach or a consultant, you may be operating multiple hats. You may be wearing multiple of these hats as you go through your business. You may have one or two people that work for you that take over some. I know some people work with a VA uh, that helps them take over some of this. And I know we have some VAs here today that will help you with that. So it's really interesting, but we wear many hats. And my question to that then really becomes, uh, which of these departments, so which of these departments is the one, and please listen carefully to the terminology, this is really key. Which of these departments is primarily responsible for creating the revenues that drive the business, that provide the fuel to move things forward? So which of these departments is primarily responsible for creating revenues that drives the business forward? What do we think to that? Punch it in to the chat box. OK, so we have some. OK, so we have some. OK, we have some answers here. So we've got. Uh, Sales, Claudia says, marketing, purchasing, delivery, sales, customer service, okay, research, management, okay, interesting, okay, great. So the answer is, and absolutely, and Alison has summarized that really well, all of them working together actually are important. And having said that, this department that's primarily responsible, i.e. its sole purpose, its sole responsibility is to drive this operation forward is sales. So you may or may not disagree with that. And I'm just going to create a distinction here between marketing and sales, because I think this is really important. Marketing has a responsibility to, of doing everything in the business in order to generate the lead. So up until the point that the lead is generated and by lead, I mean, when you acquire a name, an email address, maybe an address, a physical one, a phone number, something like that. That's when the marketing department's job finishes and the sales department then takes over to create a monetization from that information into actual 
pound value. So your sales department is absolutely critical in this operation. And so today, where we talk about pricing, we are talking about sales, i.e. the fuel inside of this, because it is the sales department that uses pricing. So I want us to be really clear about this aspect. Now, we all will have a slightly different relationship to the word sales. And for the purposes of this conversation, I want to make very clear that sales is the vehicle that we use to serve our customers because you cannot provide a service unless you've made a sale. So you have to be having a good skill set around selling and serving in order to serve your customer. You need to have a good, these two things are intrinsically interlinked. You cannot serve without sales. So sales is just a mechanism of service and it is the service department or the sales department that uses pricing. So that's why this is a really important topic for all coaches and consultants to really have an awareness around. Good, so with that understood, I want to talk about core pricing psychology. Okay, so core pricing psychology. Here's something that's really key. Now, I'm gonna split this into a grid. There's four segments inside this grid. So the first segment is where we have an unknown brand that charges a low price. So it's rel and when I say unknown brand, I don't mean that absolutely no one knows it. I mean that it's less known, right? So for example, our businesses may be uh, inside of the unknown brand category, i.e. a few people will know about it, but it's nowhere near as big as some of the bigger brands. And we'll look at some of those in just a moment. Then you have unknown brand that charges a high price. Then you have a known brand, but it charges a low price. So known brand charging a low price. Now, can you think of, and here's an interactive section, can you think of any known brands that charge a low price? I.e. you walk in knowing the brand and they're going to charge a low price. You're going to get a deal. Right, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely, superb. Andy says Lidl, Claudia says Primark. Julie says Aldi, Aldi, um, Shirley, thank you. Thank you, Joy McDonald's, Ryan S, spot on Patrick. Greg's says Rebecca, absolutely. These are all known brands that charge a low price. Then you have known brands that charge a high price, i.e. you walk in and you know you're going to pay a premium for their products or services. So you know you're going to walk into that and you know you're going to pay, pay a premium. Whether it's a higher quality product or not is debatable, but you know that the brand and you know you're going to walk in, pay a premium. Can we think of any brands like that? Any brands that people can think of that are known and you're going to pay a premium? Lots of answers coming in. Amazing. Yes, absolutely. Jonathan Harrods. Mary says Apple. Jimmy Choo says Julie. Yes, absolutely. Julia says Marks and Spencers, Andy says Gucci, Rolex, spot on Simon. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci is quite popular obviously. Waitrose, absolutely, so this is all correct. So these are some examples of known brands that charge high prices. Now compared to these brands, generally speaking, our coaching businesses or consulting businesses, if you compare them by comparison to the levels of these brands, we're going to fall into these top boxes where we're unknown brand. So if we agree with that, then we have to make a decision. Are we unknown brand low price or are we unknown brand high price? And there are obviously pros and cons to both. Pricing psychology dictates that an unknown brand that charges a low price has a lower perceived value. Now, please be please, please understand the terminology that I'm using. It is lower perceived value, okay? So the perception of your customer is that, wow, why are they charging less? Like, why is it a low price compared to the competitors? It may not be that good. Uh, on the inverse of that, you've got um, a higher perceived value for an unknown brand that charges a high price. And this is really key to get because we need to make a distinction as to which box we want to fall into. 
So this is core pricing psychology, and these are pros and cons for both of them. Now, there is no right and wrong. It's not that you have an unknown brand. If you charge a low price, then you know it, it's just wrong to do that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying here is that we should be clear about the pros and cons of each of these pricing strategies through basic pricing psychology. How much should the business charge? Depending on the size of the problem that the business solves, these are some hourly rates that I've put a lot of research into that different types of coaches should be looking at charging inside of their business. And this is a really, really critical thing. So do take a screenshot of this, take a photo of this, because this is research that I've done that dictates hourly rates for what different types of business owners or consultants should charge. Now, consultants should actually be adding 50% to these numbers because consultants offer an end to end solution. How do I charge what my business is worth? You may have looked at those numbers. You may have looked at where you are on the grid and been like, I'm not charging anywhere near that. If that's the case, well, how can we charge what the business is worth? You want to have experience, expertise and knowledge, and you want to have these ideally as an equilateral triangle. Now, the more you can grow each of these, the more you have the capability of charging, charging up to where you should be charging. So your triangle may be really small or it may be really big. And depending on various factors, i.e. the experience, the expertise and the knowledge, you're able to charge different amounts. So having said that, your triangle may not be an equilateral. It may be that you have a little bit less experience, for example, but you have great expertise and knowledge. So you want to go out there and you may not be able to charge the hourly rate that your business needs to charge, but you want to go out there, get going and then start to bridge that experience gap. That's an example. Great. So that's it. We've just looked at why this topic is important. We've looked at core pricing psychology and we've looked at how to charge what the business is really worth. I gave you that triangle. So inside of why this topic is important, we looked at the fact that the sales department is primarily responsible for generating revenues. We looked at core pricing psychology. We looked at unknown brand low value, unknown brand high value. We looked at known brands as well. And we looked at how to charge what the business is worth as well. So um, I'd love to talk to coaches and consultants about this. And um, this is what I look like, actually, when I'm looking at my phone. I see that you've dropped in time in my diary to have a chat, um, which is a link I'll drop into the chat box right now. And I'd love to talk to you if you want to increase your prices, but you're a little unsure. You're not sure whether your customers will be able to pay the premium. You're not sure. If you can, you're not sure what to package inside of a product. You're not sure, you know, even if you deserve to charge more, let's have a chat about that and uh, really understand and ascertain what we can do. So that's it from me. My name is Rishi Patel. I'm the founder of Selling in Alignment, and I'm going to hand back over to Brittany, who's going to facilitate Q&A.